<laughs> You're really gonna stick that in your sleeve. I am, yeah. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna happen today? Gotta be ready. That tissue is your your spidey senses. Be like, I'm gonna yeah. cry. <laughs> 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 I knew this was going to be a good idea. <laughs> Our son will not let you open a door. At five no. years old, when you try, he's like, Mommy, that's a man's job. Mm -hmm. Like He gets stern about he it. He does. Yeah. And our daughter is learning the same thing. She'll stop and wait for him to open the door for her. Like You can't have one set of kids being parented different than another set of kids because your, your family is not going to feel like a family. Right. It's going to be divided, and the kids are going to feel that way. The, the two kids that are our mom's kids... Or dad's kids get special treatment. We are raising sheep dogs, not wolves. And I was like, mother bro. Holy like, tell shit. me that. Like, goosebumps. That's what I want my kids to be. You earned that shirt you're wearing. And we're back. We're back. Yeah. Yeah. Episode 35. <laughs> That's me trying really hard to... I have very poor volume control. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. Before we get into emails, as you're grabbing your tablet, you want to open the packages that are sitting over there? Because we got some oh, mail. Oh, yeah. This is our, my first energy drink since our Matrix... No, I'm sorry. Second energy drink since our Matrix interview. Mm -hmm. So it's been one week, two energy drinks where I was drinking two a day. Oh, I've missed that so much. Energy drinks. <laughs> Would you like me to do that for you? Yes, Miss, please. I have nails. I'm trying my best. I think it's getting to the point where I could probably pierce with these nails. I'm getting so good at putting my own jewelry back in my face with the nails. I'm not going to bother you with your lunchbox hands. I can do it. Help me get this 20 gauge ring back in my nose. I can do it. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not going to look at that yet. We're going to read the card. Um, it's a piece of wood with something ingrained, and I'm very excited to see it. Oh, this is the burn. Oh, it's a burn? That's what they referred to it as, the burn. As a burn. Okay. Sick burn. I love this little envelope. It looks like a homemade envelope. Love that. Oh, paper's charred. Look at that. I hope you signed it. Okay. Dear Chris and Peaches, I just want to say and show a thank you to you both for all you guys are doing in my life. I listen to y'all daily, which is opening my eyes to a lot, while going through postpartum depression. Oh, period. Postpartum depression's a bitch. Yeah. I was in a postpartum depression. So my, the children are super close together. Um, they're technically Irish twins. That's the term. Why has it got to be Irish? I find that offensive. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um... I don't really find it offensive. I was gonna say, could you elaborate? I could care <clears throat> less what people call shit. They're just words. <clears throat> I'm not I, Irish. I just fuck a lot. <laughs> I love that you could just admit that there is no basis behind your argument. <laughs> tis what tis. You were just saying shit to say shit. Yep. I hope to one day live my relationship in a lifestyle as healthy as yours. As you guys open my views to a lot I'm working on within myself now. I am forever grateful to have come across your TikTok page. Side note. Oh, to me. If you like true crime, true crime podcast, check out Small Town Forgotten. It's a cold case that just reopened in 21. Trying to get the killers of my friend's dad and clear my dad's name. Trying. Oh, but that's what's it, that's what it's called, or like you. This is actually your friend, huh? Either way, I'm intrigued. I'm gonna have to figure this out. Anyways, I'm subscribed on YouTube now to you all. Thank you for that. Those YouTube subscriptions <laughs> actually help. They really do, yeah. You don't get as much content as Patreon does, but they definitely help. All right, so I'm subscribed on YouTube now to y'all, which keeps me going with all the videos daily. While I do my housework, I used to have a small business called Pyro Die with my daughter's stepmom, but had twins 
and another baby back to back. Oh my gosh. So you have two toddlers and an infant? Oh, that's. You got Irish twi triplets. I said twiplets. I know what it was like back to back with two children. Yeah, I'm good on that. Back to back with three children. Ooh, girl, you are one strong mama. Good on you for doing that and working on yourself. Uh, so she stopped wood, wood burning. God, W's and R's are so hard for me. Therefore, this gift... Therefore, this gift isn't that great. Oh, I'm not going to read the rest of that negative sentence. She's, oh, it's been almost three years since she's done woodworking. Well, thank you for that lovely letter. That's dope. I don't do well when people put themselves down. It doesn't... I don't care you haven't done it in three years. This might not be the greatest thing you've ever made, but you still took the time to do this and you sent it to us and I'm going to love it. Okay. <gasps> no fucking way. It's the picture that hangs. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Okay, that's intense. Right? That's a lot. So should we like cover this or coat this in some sort of like... Like, like epoxy or something? Right, like so, should we... Right, so the wood doesn't go bad or, or is it good just the way that it is? Damn, I want one now for my whiskey stuff, but a bigger one. Yeah. With a, like a logo or something. That's wild. That's wild. Isn't that crazy? Holy shit. I'm looking at this, right? I'm going to show it to you guys. So the, these little dark areas, right? You can see where this, this person burns. has individual fucking. Mm -hmm. This has taken hours. Yeah. This could have taken days, weeks. I don't know how long it takes to do wood burning. And they even got the little mushroom guy right. Yep. Yeah, my, my tribal tattoo is accurate. Like they, they did the shit. thing. I'm gonna get emotional all over again. As some I with a depression, it is so hard for me to dedicate myself to things. And somebody possibly fighting depression dedicated themselves to this to send away to us. Ugh. Being human's hard, but I enjoy doing it with some people. Yeah. Yeah. This is neat. This was really cool to receive. I love that we have fans that send us stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Like Danish's little chaos Elmo with the to be better shirt on sitting right next to where we do our lives. Yep. That bread book. I. Ugh. We have a dope fucking community of people this, supporting us. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> what do you mean I have people supporting me? <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it's not that I've never had support in my life. There's just... It's never been that waiting for, okay, now you're dangling it. Yeah. Like. Yeah. What do you want? Right. Like, what are you expecting from me? Or there's that ulterior motive behind it. This is just wild. Yeah. You're going to want to reach out to that person. Is she in discord? I believe so. You're going to want to reach out to her and find out if you need to treat that with anything. Yeah. You should probably flip that envelope over and move it away. The big white one. This one? Yeah. Oh. Just, yeah. I didn't even see it. Okay, next one. That should tear. Just call me Hercules. Calm down over there, Hercules. <laughs> what is that? Handkerchiefs. I'm so con oh there's oh there's notes. <laughs> so many things are going through my mind. Have I mentioned this before? Did I probably for all your crying? Maybe. <laughs> it's from Glamour Craft. Okay. 
I love this. Thank you for your bravery and sharing your story with us. I know sometimes your content and emails can have you emotional and Chris doesn't like sharing his hanky. So I got you some of your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I actually don't like sharing my hankies with you because they end up missing for months at a time. They weren't missing. I knew exactly where it was. I just. I didn't. <laughs> I told you it was in my car and then it was in the washer and then it was sitting in our laundry and I got it to you. Right. But it was not with my kit. So if I needed that hanky, I wouldn't have been able to find it. I recall you pulling that hanky out of your car, not right, a kit. Right. Because you never know when you're going to need a microfiber cloth or a snot rag. This is so nice. Oh, my God. You know what I could do? I could fucking. <laughs> 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 Bitches. I'm unstoppable now. <laughs> Walmart. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cinebistro. Oh my god. I love that you planned this night for us, babe. Get fucking back in there. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm yeah. You're gonna go to hold my hand in the car and be like, not that one. Not that one. That's the snot rag hand. I know better. Okay, hang on. Now we're just gonna <laughs> stretch out those sleeves. They're already stretched. I pull them up to my biceps. I am pretty weak right now, uh, but my biceps are still there. Yeah. So I pull them up to here and while I'm cooking and like pulling shit, I'd be like, ooh, too tight. And I'd be like, okay, I got to pull that back down before I stretch it. Something about yellow just doesn't do it for you. It makes me feel like it's trying to backstab me. Like, why are you being a snake in my life right now? Yellow. I don't trust it. Which is crazy. If somebody wears yellow, I'm less inclined to trust them. Like, it's funny because I, my black and yellow S SWFL shirt is one of my favorites. Yeah? Yeah. That yellow, that, I like that yellow. That very, that's like a caution yellow. Yeah. I like that. This. More like highlighter. Easter yellow. Yeah. I don't trust it. Too cheerful. Nobody's that happy. And I say that as somebody who's extremely happy. And I just pissed off a lot of people saying that. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're entitled to your favorite color. And if your favorite color is yellow, I'm suspicious of you. So, oh, you got a purple one too. There's purple. Yeah. I think this one's my favorite. This is going to be the one I carry. It's going to go very well with my outfits. <laughs> You're really going to stick that in your sleeve. I am, yeah. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen today? Got to be ready. That tissue is your, your spidey senses. Like, quick. I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. What'd you do? Did you hurt your neck? <laughs> I didn't realize my headrest was down. <laughs> so I went to go. I thought there was a piece of port. I'm just kidding. Did you just give yourself whiplash? Why did you put your headrest down? I didn't do it on purpose. It must have, it must have happened when I lowered my thing when we were done recording. Uh, it's the other one. Oh, my gosh. Have you ever seen that that video? You're going to have to clip it in. I was given... I was given... The ah! Come on, I'm on the phone! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh my. That's exactly what I just felt like my neck hurts, dude. That was my big ass head, dead weight on my neck, unsupported. That sucked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I knew this was gonna be a good idea. <laughs> I'm not actually crying. I'm just playing into the joke. Oh man, am I a good comedian? I mean, that was pretty funny. Okay, I'm getting more comfortable in the role. Keep going. Someone call Kevin Hart. <laughs> So we are, we have a lot in the works right now. We have a lot to talk about. Mm. It's been um, almost a week since we've recorded because of life. Just life shit. Yeah. And since then, um, I am currently working on a consulting business mm -hmm. so that I can work on other people's businesses with them. Um, we are working on doing some more stuff with Matrix, which I'm pretty fucking pumped about. I'm pretty excited about that too. So we have a meeting with them next Friday mm -hmm. to figure out how we can do that. We're in the talks of creating a second and possibly third podcast, one with Brandon and Kayla, and then one that is based off Matrix Hormones. Um, we spent the better part of this afternoon 
looking at um, commercial space so that we can start podcasting and live streaming somewhere that has guaranteed connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That finicky can't go do lives and Patreon stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's affecting, it's affecting the following and Mm -hmm. our income. So, but if we can get that location, we, we put in our, our offer today and filled out all the application for it. So if they accept our offer, we'll have a space for the next three years. It's dedicated to the podcast. So to be better, we'll have the whiskey room, And then we'll have our current podcast room where we go live off site, Mm -hmm. which means we have to leave the house to go to work. So it'll separate that. The only downside I see is Tuesdays, which means we may have to move our Patreon lives around on the nights that we have the kids because we won't be able to do that there unless we just buy a whole nother setup and run it. So, but that's, that's not for the podcast. Okay. Um, We are working on now that we have the space, if this goes through that we are going to start doing the merchandise thing so that we have um, product online for sale almost mm-hmm. all the time. And what I'll do is I'll just print the labels out from here, go up there, grab all, everything that I need, fill the labels, and then just run it to the post office and drop the shit off every day. Yeah. But we are, we are really moving forward and trying to make this thing a brand. The biggest part of all of that, though, is if we have a physical location doing interviews means people don't have to come to our house. Right. And we can start inviting people and be like, hey, I know that you're an influencer. We'd really love to have you on. Let me buy you a plane ticket to Florida round trip so that you can come do this interview. I'm not paying for your rental car or doing any of that shit. I'll pay to get you here. You got to worry about the rest of it kind of thing. But we could get people on the podcast. Yeah. Um. I don't know. There's there's a there's a lot of people that I would like to have a sit down bullshit with and just talk to them. Um. Do you follow the older millennial on TikTok? He's um, a white dude with a beard. I would have to see him, you know, like the the conservative aunt. Mm-hmm. When you mentioned him by his name, I didn't know who you were talking about, but I do follow him. Yeah. So yeah, I, would- I actually need to reach back out to him because I know that he's back. He's in Fort Myers. Yeah. So it's not like he he's literally an hour from us. It would be mm-hmm. nothing for him to drive up here. But I would rather do that at a studio than in our home. Although I have a very nice whiskey wall, and I know you know he may mm-hmm. want to come and have a drink or two. But you know, interviewing him could interview it could, that could open doors. That could open other doors that we currently don't have access to. Right. Because I know that he's friends with Adam Calhoun mm-hmm. and um, Struggle. And like there's people that he knows. Right. That that could potentially get us recognized. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And it's like that in all facets of things. Mm-hmm. So knowing that this is going from a hobby that we turned into a business that could now really be turning into a business. And we can have editors because I've got the NAS driver hooked up now. Um, we have email screeners like this mm-hmm. is actually starting to employ people. We are really starting to do the thing. We have people on payroll. We do. Yep. That's insane. Yep. This started as a joke. <laughs> it did. It did. But <laughs> I, I'm very excited about the future of all of this. And like, because we've been able to take a break, like I, I really feel like even if we sat down today and just read trauma dumping emails, I think I'd be okay with it. Yeah. I, I would like to hear somebody else's trauma besides my own. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't feel run down anymore. Yeah, me you know, either. We were so fucking inundated with people's bullshit that like it got to really like affect us. It got to the point that I was neglecting my own. Yeah. I recognize that now. Like after all the processing that I've done over this last two weeks, it's been three weeks at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I've recognized I've really neglected my own shit. I feel a lot better. You told me today that you want to be a woman spokesperson for Matrix. I do. You want to talk about that at all? Uh, Yeah. So I didn't... <laughs> I keep using the analogy. I'm going to continue using it. I'm like a fucking pool. You are checking my chemicals. And if something is off balance, you have to have a fucking soup to pour into this pool to make sure what you're adding doesn't offset something else. Is that a correct kind of on par? You know, the little test strips that you put in the hot tub. Yeah. I'm your test strip. (laughs) Every time you use the pool analogy, I want to be like, I'll be your dipstick. (laughs) Every time. Take it to the candy shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, so yeah, we well, I sat down. No, we did the interview before I did the blood work. So we sat down with Ken and Sean, who are the Matrix dudes. And I recognized I know absolutely nothing about being me. <laughs> like biologically, I know nothing about being a woman. It's pretty common. Most people don't know what's going on inside their bodies. Right. So found out a lot of things, started doing a lot of research, um, 
really started looking into PCOS. I'm uncomfortable with how little I know about how I work. And in recognizing that my cortisol being four times what it needs to be is massively. You, you are over by 400. Is that not four not, times? Not four times. You were over by 400. Right. So what is that times the regular amount? Because it's like 100 or is it 80? Yours was almost 800. So, and, and the high of the cor- of the cortisol area should have right. been like in the high threes as like an, a normal high. Oh. So you were way the fuck over. Yeah. 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 Uh, explains a lot. <laughs> well, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, cortisol is your fight or flight. <coughs> Um, that is your stress indicators for people who have a hard time sleeping. Mm-hmm. That's normally linked to, cor- to cortisol levels. Yeah. Your weight issues can be linked to cortisol, stress. You know, there's a whole lot that that goes into that, and we'll get into that after you do your sit down with Ken. Yeah. But um, when I last time I had my blood panel done with my GP, my GP mm-hmm. was like, "Your cortisol is through the fucking roof," because mine was like that too. He's like, "It's why you're sleeping two hours a night." Your body is stuck in fight or flight. He's like, you're in a constant state of stress. Mm-hmm. It's it's could be why my beard is white at fucking because my beard started going white at like 35 years old. Um, so there was a whole lot that went into all that. And he told me to take ashwagandha and melatonin to start sleeping because that helps reduce cortisol. And it's natural. But after doing my research into ashwagandha, you can't stay on that. Mm-hmm. You have to cycle it because yeah. it's not good for your brain to stay on that shit long term. Um, but I did and it broke my sleep cycle of, of only sleeping two to three hours a night and now I can sleep pretty good. And when I start mm-hmm. falling back into that, I just take my melatonin and, and ashwagandha for a month and I'm right back into where I was. Yeah. But so we had that conversation with Ken and Sean. At that point, I already had the appointment made to do my, to do my blood work. After that conversation with them, I was more excited to do my blood work. Like, all right, how fucked up am I? (laughs) What do we got to fix? Because I want to feel great. I don't I don't want to feel mediocre. I feel like. I don't know, a sack of soggy potatoes being dragged around by a peasant. Damn, I'm not a peasant. No, I'm not you. I will drag your soggy potato ass everywhere. Don't you ever (laughs) call me a peasant woman. (laughs) No, I'm even more uncomfortable saying that a saggy pat sack of potatoes being dragged around by a king what the fuck <laughs> I, you're lucky i like potatoes no i'm flustered <laughs> i just remembered how like the last time we had a potato discussion mm-hmm. the baked potato th- mm-hmm. what was that <laughs> <laughs> the baked potato thing that went on in discord forever yeah it's yeah. funny forgot all about the baked um, potato thing Oh, fuck. What were you talking about? Oh, yeah. So sack of potatoes. That's me right now. And you're not the peasant. The peasant's just a byproduct of my existence, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, I want to go from feeling that and I want to feel like a fucking Amazonian. I want to be able to fucking drag my man. Shebra. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all you 80s kids. And got the blood work done, got my panel back. I was in the middle of doing something with the kids and I looked at my phone and it was like, lab core, your results are ready. And I was like, <gasps> and I was like, kids, give me a minute. I have to go talk to pops. <laughs> and they were like objectifying, like not objectifying. Is that it? Object. They were objecting. Objecting. They were objecting like, no, mom, stay with us. Like, hang out. And I was like, no, this isn't massively important to me <laughs> and i just came to you and i showed you my phone and i was like it's here and you were like what and you saw it and you were like mm. <laughs> <laughs> i was so excited to hear what you had to say yeah like and i mean everything was pretty all right most most of your shit was you had a few things that were pretty high that i believe could be like problematic right but i'm not ken yeah. I, I don't understand the things to the level he does Right. I understand the men's aspect very well. Yeah. So like having now I see why he says the women's panels are much more in depth. There's a whole lot more that goes into yours than that goes into ours. Yeah. So. And I'm I'm excited to hear what all of it means. I'm going to do research before we sit down with Ken. So I'm like pin out behind the ear ready. And I'm fully convinced if if I get put on a regimen, like if I can't handle all of this holistically, 
it is going to improve my life. Yeah. And women are constantly asking me, what can I do to be better? Like, what are you doing? This is what I'm doing. And seeing how committed you are to this and seeing how it has improved you, you've been off of your regimen for a while now. Tell me you can't see a difference in me from five months ago to now. I looked at you the other day and I was like, I cannot wait until you're back on your TRT. Yeah, it sucks, dude. It, you're a completely different person. And like, I don't love you less because of it. I'd fucking hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to make that clear. Like, I haven't judged you because of it. I, I have definitely noticed that. Yes, life is dope. Your quality of life, though, like within yourself is not what it was. Right. So life can be fucking amazing. If you're battling your demons while living a dope life, 80% of your life still kind of sucks. Yeah. So there's a lot that I've noticed just speaking solely on me. My mm -hmm. social battery mm -hmm. has not been above like 25%. Yeah. Since I came off my, my TRT. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, if I go to the shop, I have my headphones in. Like I have a very hard time dealing with people. Right. Um, my desire to train mm -hmm. which is something that i love doing my entire life is gone mm -hmm. i today i did arms this is the first time i've lifted in two weeks i did cardio and arms today which is not like me like mm -hmm. i normally wake up and walk right to the gym like it's the first thing that i do it's my wake-up routine mm -hmm. um i'm napping throughout the day i took two naps yesterday which is not normal mm -hmm. like i'm normally not a sleeper my drive is gone which is my biggest thing like i have all these things that i want to do but i find excuses to not do them yeah so there's just a whole lot of that shit that goes into everything that's a problem for me. But I've noticed that your romantic drive has died a little bit too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gone. Yeah. Yeah. It it the libido is I I think it just takes longer to get the engine going. Like I'm now like a 1930s Mercury. You got to start it and let it sit in the driveway for a little while while you tinker right. with it and give it a little bit of gas to like. Yeah. It takes some time. Well, that it's used to not, not be the case. Right. Not just that in that case of like. You're not as handsy as you used to be like outside of that. Right. Yeah. Because I don't want to do anything but sleep. Right. Yep. And and if it's that drastic for, for us, mm -hmm. for men, it's that like that easy for us to go off. Mm -hmm. Yours is so much more complex. Right. And my shit has probably never been right because I've been on birth control since I started menstruating. Right. Which is guarantees that your shit is not right. the way that it should be. So... I don't know what it feels like to not to be like balanced. Do. Right. Yeah. I am very excited for all of this. I'm excited to share the experience. I'm excited to share how my mental improves, how just my perspective in life improves. Yeah. And I want that for other women. And I feel more women will be apt to hear it from me versus me. you or Ken. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to get involved with those guys on some level. And it's not even a financial thing. Mm -mm. Like I, I believe in it. I know right. about hormones. So like I know what it, it does for us. Mm -hmm. And if I can see a change in you from it, that'll be dope. Like because then I can yeah. talk about it from, you know, my my wife's perspective. Like, right. I don't know. I don't want to keep harping on the hormone thing. This was not a plug for Matrix. This was just talking about the excitement that we have for all of this moving forward. Mm -hmm. I will. I will say this. When we sat down with them. Sean said that the amount of veterans that they work with that come in and are on all kinds of medicines start getting their hormones levels figured out. And once they get their levels figured out, most of them come off of their meds, if not decreasing them like mm -hmm. drastically. So if that can work for a man, it can absolutely work for a woman. You just got to figure out where you're supposed to be at. Right. And, and, you know, this would not have been a thing 100 years ago. No. Because 100 years ago, we were eating organic foods. We weren't eating preservatives and fucking... We you were know. hunting our food. We weren't going to a grocery store. Right. Yep. A hundred years ago, we weren't hunting our food, but we had farms. If I didn't have markets. cattle, I'd go talk to Shelly. There was markets. Yep. Yep. I, I wonder when they, I know that the, the refrigerator came about in the turn of the 19th century, but like even that was just a chill box. Like you'd have to get the ice brought in. So like, it wasn't like they were just freezing this shit in your home. So it was a very different. Um, yeah. I don't think it was electric. It was just. Something that ch stay chill longer insulated. Yeah, that's they, the word I'm looking for. They did actually bring in electric ones, but it didn't yeah. freeze. Mm. Like there was no ice makers in them, and like you know what I mean. Like you would have to buy blocks of ice and stick it in your freezer to keep things cool. Gotcha. But preservatives weren't there, so mm -hmm. women were going to the grocery store three or four times a week to order food or to you know to to grocery shop. Mm -hmm. Because if you didn't and you let it sit, it would go bad in a couple of days. Yeah, you know you can buy shit now and just let it sit on your counter, and it'll look the same for fucking weeks because of the amount of shit that's in it. And we don't know what this is doing to our body long term. Yeah. So 
you guys want any information on that, on what we're talking about now, go watch the Matrix interview that we did with Sean and Ken. Mm -hmm. Ken and Sean. I don't remember how I labeled that. It's to be better interviews. It's on the interview playlist on YouTube. Those dudes are fucking knowledgeable, man. They're smart. Yeah. Also, just, I fuck it, might as well plug it. If you guys are looking into getting your hormones done, matrix matrixhormones.com, do your blood panel. You will get uh, $200 off your consultation if you mentioned to be better. Even if you don't think there's anything wrong with you and you are at the fucking peak of your performance, get your blood panel done anyway, so that way you have something to compare it to later down in life when you are not working the way you're supposed to be working. Because eventually it's going to it's going to dip. It's going to mm-hmm. happen to everyone. All right. Would you like to jump into some emails? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find the... All right. So this email is called, We Parent Differently in Our Relationships. Hey, Chris and Peaches. I want to start off by saying thank you both for everything y'all are doing. I found y'all on TikTok, then went down the rabbit hole of subscribing on YouTube and listening to the pod on Spotify while at work. I've been an avid listener since February and try to absorb and obtain y'all's advice in every aspect of my life. It has truly been a life changer. With that being said, I'll get into it. I don't think I will ever get over the fact that people email us in and say that the shit that we say is changing lives. Right. It's wild. Like for the last week, I've been a fucking mess. <laughs> Depressed, crying, sobbing, processing shit. It, I don't know. It's just crazy. My boyfriend, 32, and I, 28, have been together since the May of 2020. We were dating for around six months, and because of housing issues, we made a decision to move in together. No excuses on either end. We both agree now it was way too soon. Everything in our relationship has been fantastic from the get-go. So together for three years, moved in after six months. Everything in the relationship has been fantastic. All right. We have very specific boundaries that we set for one another and have a very free-flowing life. The issue is we do not agree on each other's parenting situations whatsoever. Should be known by now. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. One of those important conversations to be had before moving in if children are involved. That was something that you and I talked about in depth because you were very concerned that one of our big issues would be I'd have a problem with your parenting style. Right, because I'm, st- I'm strict. Yeah. I-, I don't want fucking piece of shit human beings coming out of, out of our lives. Right. These kids at, at four and five years old mm-hmm. are learning how to be good people. Yeah. Our son will not let you open a door at five no. years old. When you try, he's like, mommy, that's a man's job. Mm-hmm. Like he gets stern about he it. He does. Yeah. And our daughter is learning the same thing. She'll mm-hmm. stop and wait for him to open the door for her. Like there's still things that we are working because they're kids. Like they're right. little, mm-hmm. little, there's a very far understanding. Mm-hmm. But when I'm talking to, to our son and I'm like, this is why we do this. And I yeah. explain to him like the whole door thing, you walk out first to make sure there's not a threat out there. And then a few hours later, I'm like, Hey, why do we open the door for women? And if it's dark outside, walk out before them. And he, he spit it back to me. Mm-hmm. He may not understand it, but at least he knows it. So yeah. as he understands those words later in life, it'll click for him. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ever apologize for my parenting styles. I'm not mm-hmm. abusive by any means, but I'm not a pushover either. Right. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna let somebody else tell us how to raise our fucking kids. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. there was a concern in that because when I'm, I'm going to throw you under the bus. Okay. When we first started talking, we weren't even talking at this point. We were just friends. I I dropped off a big desk. Do you Mm -hmm. remember that day? Mm -hmm. And I walked in and little man was fucking screaming. Yeah, that meltdown, yeah. Hiding underneath of a table. Like, granted, he was he was young, like way young. Oh yeah, he was still in He was way young. Yeah. Yeah. Um anyways, I, I fucking went in there and tried to talk to him like why are you crying like that dude like talk to me and and he just screaming at the top of his fucking lungs and my kids never did that right so i knew that like as a mom you were kind of a pushover and letting your kids just kind of cry it out doing the gentle parenting thing and i'm not about that life no that was one of those situations where i was still trying to navigate his autism oh okay well i mean that makes sense shame on you for judging me i, I mean fuck it it is what it is when i see parents letting their kids scream and cry and act like that i, I fucking judge hard yeah my kids never did that. Mm-hmm. My kids learned very early on that we don't we don't behave that way. Right. And, and he still has meltdowns because he's autistic, but mm-hmm. it's nowhere near like it was before. And like when he starts to to do that, and I stand up and like pull him aside to talk to him, the moment I get near him, he stops mm-hmm. crying. And it's not a fear thing; it's he doesn't want to look weak and like. That's very much a thing for him. Right. He wants yeah. to be a man. 
So, and, and that's, you know, people will call that toxic masculinity because I'm not letting him cry. There's a time to cry. There is absolutely a time where it is okay to cry. Oh, he knows. But like, not because your straw fell on the floor and we picked it up and took it from you. Right. When he's having a night terror. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, you're the one who's comforting while he's crying. Yeah. So you are definitely an emotional safe space for him. And he knows that when he's hurt, he runs to you. You want to talk about one of the hardest things that I've ever had to experience? Those night terrors fucking wreck me inside because part of me wants to scream and like try to wake him up and shake him and like, hey, get him out of it, you know, because I know that he's like that terror is there. Obviously, night terrors. But like mm-hmm. I've like you can see the fear in his face. Um, and, and some of the things that I've been reading, people are like, just put him back to bed and let him cry it out. Or it's not crying. He Dude is fucking terrified for his life. I'm holding him and he's screaming. Let me go back to my people. I want my mom. Right. Yeah, there's a whole lot that goes into that. And like, you know, when you're a parent, you just want to keep your kids safe. And like, you can't you can't unfortunately fight their nightmares. It's a devastating thing. I have a very hard time with his night terrors. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know. There is definitely a time to cry. And he's learning that he knows there was a, a time we were sitting outside and he dropped his he has hand puppet dinosaurs. He dropped one on the ground immediately, like wanted to have that breakdown and then he looked up at me to see my reaction. I'm just, what are you going to do? Yeah. Like, there, I'm no reaction from me. I'm not mad at you. I'm not picking it up for you. What are you going to do? And he took a second. He went, <sighs> and he picked it up. And he was like, still a goose. And he walked away. <laughs> like. He's learning to self-regulate. He's learning. I don't know. Yeah. I am. People can say it's harsh or strict or stern or whatever they want to say. Our children have an emotional regulation that most adults don't have. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, he doesn't cry like he used to about injuries anymore either. Mm -mm, He doesn't. Yeah. He did did say damn it one day. (laughs) (laughs) Did he? Yeah. Yep. I heard damn it. I'm like, whoa, that's a big boy word. You don't use that yet, son. You got to wait a little while before you use that word. (laughs) You can say, dang it. <laughs> you could say, dang it all day. Just don't say, damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they also understand the difference between adult words and kid words. Yes, they and do. I, and I laughed. Like, it was funny to me. And I know yeah. everybody, every parent's not supposed to laugh when your kid says a curse word. Yeah. You're supposed to, like, check yourself because it's you're the reason they're doing that. Mm. This shit's funny to me. Right. But I also know that, like, words that we use in the house are not to be used outside of the house. And as long as it doesn't become a habitual thing, I don't care. Yeah. But I still want to correct the behavior while it's happening because I don't want my kids to talk like I do. Right. I I actually talk like this because of my parents. My stepdad has a stutter and he uses the F word to like piece words together sometimes. So I heard like commas and exclamation points for the F word. So I just picked up on it. Mm. And I've talked like this since I was like 11. Oh, yeah. I've talked like this since I was like eight or nine. Yep. I was at school talking mad shit. Be like, don't tell my mom though. (laughs) Did Yeah. It got to the point where it was happening at home in front of everybody. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. It got to a point where I was like cussing at my mom and shit. That was just regular conversation. I worked three days a week. When we moved in together, we had agreed. And the other parents agreed that because I was home with the children on our week for majority of the time, I could discipline his children while he was at work. He leaves work at 5.30 a.m. Oh, okay. So he works from 5.30 to 4 p.m. Okay. And he could discipline mine. I know people have different views on this type of agreement, but this is ours. Okay, so I'm going to pause you there because I I doubt it's going to, Mm. but I would have really liked to have had examples of what the discipline looks like. Right. There needs to be a conversation of this is how we discipline, not this is how you're going to discipline. Right. And then I'm going to talk shit about the way you discipline. Right. And I'm sure that the conversation was had, but I would have liked to have had those those conversations in the email so that Mm -hmm. we could see the way things are happening. Um, But she did get... She said that they got permission from him mm-hmm. and the other parents. Right. So there had to have been a don't hit my kid. Don't make him kneel on rice. Right. Like, you know, don't cuss at them. Right. Don't scream. Yeah. 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 There had to have been conversations there about like mm-hmm. what you can and can't do. But I would like to have known what they are, because if right. there's a different team <clears throat> in parenting styles, there's got to be something that mm-hmm. is the issue here. Yeah. So those things matter. This feels like our first podcast. Yeah. Because we're just talking. Like, there's not... Yeah. I don't know. Do you understand what I mean by that? I do. Okay. I think 
every three months, we need to have a one week break from everything. Yeah. We're going to start taking vacations more than just once every six months. Yeah. Now that everything is moving the way that it's supposed to, and we have people to do the jobs that I was doing, mm-hmm. we have time to take, to do things. Yeah. Yeah. But this, we have, we've had, we've had almost an entire week of no recording. And before that, we were only recording two or three sessions where it was before we were recording every single day to get ahead of content. Now we have to get caught back up before Vegas. Right. But I'm not super concerned about that. I also know now because of the downtime, it's not the end of the world if we miss something. I but love that. Before I was very like schedule, schedule, schedule. Cause yeah. you know, that matters. Consistency fucking matters. Mm-hmm. So that's that is like kind of a relief for me because it was very apparent that you were we need to record today we need to record today i almost felt guilty saying like hey i need like i need a day yeah yeah well we were we had goals that we were trying to reach right and and you know it's just one of those things that sometimes you got to power through shit whether you want to or not because it's your fucking job to do it and like right. that's been my mindset yesterday we had the matrix interview go live on youtube and um streaming services mm-hmm and I um I fucking didn't even have that shit finished. And I messaged AJ and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, we don't have nothing to go live today. And he's like, you never sent me anything. I'm like, bullshit. And I went and looked and like, I hadn't even finished editing the post interview, like the debrief. And I was like, motherfucker. Because it was noon. Should have went live at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I went and checked Spreaker and like, we weren't uploaded. So I had to really quickly edit all of that, get it uploaded to, to everything so that it could go live. And like, normally I would have had a meltdown over that. Like, it would have ruined my entire week. Yeah. Because I miss a deadline. Like there's a discipline in that. Mm-hmm. It didn't it ruin me for like 15 minutes. I'm like, fuck it. Got to get this shit up. And just do the job. Yeah. I noticed that for the rest of the day, you were pretty upbeat about things. Yeah. I, I noticed that. I saw that. Good for you. Personal growth. I like seeing my man be a better version of himself. He has two children, one girl, one boy. The girl's eight, boy's five. And I have two girls, also eight and five. Well, Okay. Ironic, I know. The other parents have joint custody every other week and everyone gets along. The problem is I do not know how to parent the way he needs me to with his children. I admit I'm a very, I am very old school in my parenting and he is very modern in his. I've heard y'all say that there can be more than one parenting style in the home. My question is, how do I change my mental patterns to best fit the way he parents, but also keep my mental patterns to keep my own parenting styles? The kids should be parented the same. Right. You can't just because you guys have a blended family. Mm -hmm. I wish Brandon and Kayla were here right now. Yeah. Because this is really their thing. Mm -hmm. You can't have one set of kids being parented different than another set of kids because your family is not going to feel like a family. Right. It's going to be divided and the kids are going to feel that way. The the Mm -hmm. two kids that are our mom's kids or dad's kids get special treatment. Why the fuck can't we just be talked to instead of spanked or whatever the issue is? Right. Like how come they lose their phones and shit when they get in trouble? But, but I don't. Right. Yeah. There's going to be a whole lot of dude. There's, you know, that, that's a lot. That, mm-hmm. That's a, a dangerous, dangerous slope because the whole point of having a blended family is that it feels like a family. You want everyone to be right united. It, that division's a problem. It is. I also want to say that's teaching the kids a negative connotation it's about who you know Mm -hmm. yeah it could also be a whole lot of you know they love them more than us yeah because kids don't understand to the level that an adult does Mm -hmm. his children in my opinion are very whiny and throw tantrums when they do not get their way Mm -mm. we ain't doing that (laughs) that shit makes me mad as fuck yeah uh the kids have gotten a lot better about that yeah it has just turned into an okay because they recognize now you you pull that shit, not only you're not going to get what you want, you're not going to lose something. Yeah. You want to whine and cry, you can go sit in your room until you're done. I don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. This morning on the way to school, our daughter lost her tablet. Because she unlocked and opened the front door by herself. And she knows better than that. The, the house front door? Yes. So she stood in the corner before we left. And she lost her tablet this morning. And she had that whole moment in the car. Well, but I want it, but I want it. And I'm sorry. I'm like, no. We're not doing this. Pops has already told you more than once, don't touch that front door. Now I am reinfor- reinforcing the consequences that were laid by you. So just so this doesn't sound like an extreme, because mm-hmm. I can understand how that would sound like an extreme. We live on a road that is not a busy street, but people, it's not uncommon for someone to do 60 miles an hour down our road. Oh yeah. At least 10 times a day. 
I we I have signs. So I was very stressed about how fast cars are going down the road. And you took it upon yourself to order signs to put in the front yard. And it's done absolutely nothing. It's done absolutely nothing. It's getting to the point that I want to start rolling bowling balls, bowling down, the balls down the driveway. Yep. I would love to do that because you can hear them coming from the stop sign. Like it's, yes. it's a, a fucking goal to see how fast they can get before they get to the turn down there. But it would be really fun for me to roll bowling balls down the driveway. I'd love to ruin people's vehicles. Right. Like the garage door was open. It rolled. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. You should have shouldn't been fucking speeding. You could have stopped. Right. But I don't want to get sued either. So, you know, we were on a walk last night and we were on, we were in the grass on the side of the road on the way. We were almost in front of the house. And from behind me, I hear a car's tire squealing. And I had no idea which way it was going. I was anticipating for it to fly past us. I grabbed both the kids. It might be on the security camera. I grabbed both the kids and almost threw them into the yard. Like I was absolutely terrified yeah. that we were getting ready to get hit. Yeah. So um, there's so we have a very strict rule about them not opening the front door. Yeah. And our daughter very much likes to play that fucking danger game of I'm not on the road, I'm near the road. Yeah. Which yeah. doesn't take much because if people are on their phone not paying attention and they swerve a little bit, she's gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. I would rather do that harsh consequence than have to bury my child. Yeah. 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 They'll understand one day. They'll understand. I don't remember why I brought that up. I, uh, you brought up the, the, the way that we parent. Okay. She lost her tablet because of the door. Yeah. They also only have limited time with their tablet. We're they not, do. we're not digital parents. You don't get to play on the tablet and watch TV all day. Yeah. That is we're in the car. You can use it while we're in the car. Right. On occasion, if we have to work or something, we'll let them have it in the house. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they don't watch their tablets inside either yeah. or play games on it. That's just not a thing. When they're a little bit older and our, our son likes to play video games, they do it at his dad's house and that's fine. But I'm not ready for them to have that here. I want them to play. Yeah. We spend a lot of time outside. Um, Just read that they throw tantrums to get their way. For example, he is at work when we all wake up in the mornings. I'm like Chris in the mornings, a blob of a person until I wake up for a minimum of 30 minutes to an hour. His son is not. I will walk out of my bedroom to go start my bean juice and he will start asking to go outside. I am also this person and I ensure I am awake an hour before I wake up the kids. Yeah. Easy solution. That's the answer to that. That, that really is the answer of that. I don't know how someone hasn't thought of that. It's well, an inconvenience to you. Maybe because you want that extra hour of sleep. Go to bed earlier. Yep. If this is something that's causing tension between you and a child. I don't, I also don't think that the answer is to be up an hour early just to let them go outside and play. No. I, I think that you should be up an hour early just so that you can mentally deal with them. Right. And you can get a lot done while people are sleeping. Mm -hmm. you, you do. I mean, you, you fucking will do cardio. You'll do your plants. You'll go outside and smoke sometimes. I'll get like, dishes and shit done. Yeah. That extra time is big. I, I always tell people like if, if you're, if you're in a position where you want to level up in life as a man and you want to get more financially stable, yeah. if you sleep past five o'clock, that's part of your problem. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a night job, like if you work a normal nine to five, you should be going to bed an hour earlier and getting up an hour before everybody else in your house does. You can get a lot done in that hour. Right. You're not being bothered. You can read, you can journal, you can fucking meditate, you can work out. You should be working out first thing in the morning. There's a whole lot that goes into that. So that, that should be a thing anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost never in bad bed past 6 a.m. now. Yeah. Yeah. My body automatically, doesn't matter what time I go to bed, 5, 530, I'm up. Um, I agree. You, waking up an hour early, who cares if the kid wants to go outside that early? No, go do something productive. Yeah. Have you brushed your teeth yet? That's the perfect opportunity for you to be of sound mind to get mm -hmm. them on a routine. Yeah. So they learn at eight, what'd she say, five and eight? Yeah. That's the perfect opportunity for them to wake up, mm -hmm. go to the bathroom, brush their teeth, yeah. get dressed, yep. get a small breakfast mm -hmm. if that's what they're doing because they're kids. Right. And then ask if they can go outside and play. Mm-hmm. I recognize in the mornings, I was waking up at seven o'clock, going to the bathroom and then going and waking the kids up. And I noticed that I was, be, I was more irritable. I, my, sh my fuse was shorter. I had less grace with them in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like knowing that I was less in control of my emotions. Because you weren't awake. Right. And I don't want to send them to summer daycare or whatever or school with... My mom was kind of shitty with me this morning for no, like, what the fuck did I do? Yep. So now, yeah, I'm awake an hour and a half before the kids most of the time. And by the time 630 rolls around, I'm ready for the fucking day. I'm like, all right, I can get the kids up now if I wanted to. That hour wake up in the morning for me mentally as a mom has 
done wonders for the way that I treat the kids in the morning. I simply tell him that we need to wait until I get a cup of coffee, then we will go outside. He will proceed with nonstop whining or continue to ask at least 20,000 times. I'll try to keep my patience, which is a task, until I finally blow a fuse and yell at him and tell him I've answered him already. I instantly feel guilty for yelling. So how do I train myself to keep my composure? Uh, well, one, remember that they're a little human being and that they're excited and they want to have fun and they want to start their day. And just because you're not ready to do that yet doesn't mean that they aren't. Right. Kids are just happy beings. Yeah, they're not. They haven't been fucking shit on by life yet. Right. But you should give them choice theory. Yeah. If you want to go outside and play, I need my coffee. Mm -hmm. Once I have my coffee, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And if they proceed to ask and whine and throw tantrums, be like, okay, now you have a choice to make. Mm -hmm. You can either go spend the rest of your day in the room and not go outside, or you can wait until I have my coffee. And if you come out here and ask me again, you're not going to get to go outside. Yep. You have a choice to make. And, and, and start to enforce that. Yeah. Because then they know, like, mm -hmm. this isn't a punishment thing. This is, if I want to do this, I have to do this. You're going to teach them discipline. It's going to show them in the future, like, in order to get the result of Y, I have to do, mm -hmm. you know, X plus D and, and then I'll get Y. Right. Like, you know. Yeah, I do choice theory with the kids. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example. I, we just had one with our daughter and I saw it click for her mentally and she stopped whining and crying and she was just like, okay. And I can't remember what the instance was, but I, I started getting like very irritated with her. Um, I have also implemented, I'm not yelling as much. I'm starting you shouldn't to, be yelling. Right. I mean, I still do. Oh, well, of course like, people get frustrated. If I've told you three times to do something, I'm gonna raise my voice to get your fucking attention. Yep. now I'm serious go get it done right um, as you decrease your volume and you learn not to yell mm -hmm. when you're frustrated the more um, the more you implement that yeah the the less you will have to get to that point mm -hmm. the kids should know that you mean what you're saying the first time you say it right not the third and fourth which is why I used to have a problem with you counting mm -hmm. you're, you're not doing that if I right. tell you to go do something I'm not telling you twice yeah I'm gonna look at you and be like what did I say mm -hmm. and they're gonna go do it there's just not, I don't have time to, right. to coddle and do that shit. And, and like, this is why I say that you're a softer parent than I am mm -hmm. because I, I'm not doing that. If I tell a little man, put his shoes on and I walk over and I look and his shoes ain't on, I'll be like, why aren't your shoes on? This isn't a conversation anymore of you go put your shoes on. Now I want to know why you didn't do what I told you to do when I told you to go do it. Mm -hmm. And this isn't like a do what I tell you kind of thing. This is me instilling discipline. If you know you have to go to school right. and, and I told you we have to leave in five minutes, it's time to put your shoes on. I'm not going to be late because of you. You're now going to have to put your shoes on in the car and that's going to be really hard to do. And if you don't have your shoes on by the time we get there, you got to walk in there barefoot. Mm -hmm. This is a you problem. Make them learn that consequence shit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what I was saying? How awesome I am as a husband and how much you love me and I am the greatest thing on the planet. And no, I don't. You were talking about it clicking for her. That's what you were talking about. You literally saw it click while you were telling her to do something with choice theory. It's very hard to have a back and forth with you sometime because I want to engage and like talk right. to you. But sometimes I know you forget shit. So like I have to try to like yeah. guess when you're going to remember when you're not. So I'm sorry I made you forget your it's point. It's okay. I'm going to sit here and try to think about it because I was, I, I was going somewhere with that and it was tying into the email. You were talking about how you don't yell as much. That's where we were at when I chimed in. I don't remember where I was taking that. Okay. So he will proceed to nonstop whining or continue to ask at least 20,000 times. That 20,000 times asking gets under my skin after three. You can ask me a question one time. And I'll answer it. You're allowed to ask me a follow-up question. If you ask me the same question, I'm going to ask you, what did I just say? Right. I don't know. Guess you'll never know. Should have been paying attention. We are, last night, our son, you were trying to tell him something. He just was. That's the second time he's done that to me. Yes. And, oh, you were showing him the condensation outside of the can. You were trying to tell him about that. And he was just goofing off. And I was like, son, come here. Look at me. And I was like, there are going to be times in life where someone's trying to tell you something and you're not going to know it and you learn that information is going to make you the smartest person in the room. If you choose to ignore that information, you're, there's a chance you're going to be the dumbest in the room. And he was like, I don't want to be the dumbest in the room. I'm like, right. You just missed out an opportunity to be one of the smartest people in the room. Right. And he was upset about that. And he started throwing a fit. And I was like, no, you can't throw a fit about this. This is what's happening. 
when somebody, for example, pops trying to give you new information and teach you something, you listen and you absorb it. And he continued with this fit and wanted to, he went off to his bedroom or the corner wherever he went for throwing the fit. And then our daughter heard that whole conversation was like, can, can I know? And she stood there and she listened and she learned something. Right. We do have a four and five year old that understand condensation though. We do. Yes. Cause he did come back out Yeah, and he was shown yeah. um, that asking 20,000 times. You can ask me, like I said, the follow up, whatever the second or third time, depend on what mood I'm in. It could be, we could be playing around after that third time. It's no longer a game. I need you to understand that this is something that will usually cause irritation for me. Um, so I make it a point to point out those moments too. Like for example, when our daughter's being sarcastic and I'm being sarcastic, we're being sassy. I'll stop and be like, we're playing right now. We're having fun. This isn't a serious conversation. Right. Because she has a hard time separating those two things. She's learning sarcasm. Right. So when it comes to that 20,000 times, I would sit down. Is this the eight-year-old or the five-year-old? The boy's five. That, that's not even harsh parenting at that point. That's just sitting down with that five-year-old and saying, look, I understand you want to go outside. I hear you. I need my cup of coffee. If you would like to go outside, five minutes. If you ask me again, we're not going to go outside until tomorrow. And if he doesn't understand the concept of days, tell him that's 24 hours. That's a big number. He's going to be like, what? And he might be upset about that and I might do a whole new thing. That's a lesson he needs to learn. Treat this child like a human. Talk to him. I do that with the kids. We use very big words with the kids. Mm -hmm. Condensation. I'm trying to teach them what an optical illusion is right now, too, but that's... Yeah. I think that's a little bit too big for them. Yeah. Um, you looked at our daughter. You said it once, and she went, condensation. Yeah. It was a little off, but she got it. Right. Yeah, four years old. Children are sponge. They, they will understand the best of their capability you just gotta talk to this five-year-old as you would an adult yep and and i gotta be honest i don't want to hear none of that adhd shit yeah that you know you can still parent your kid even if they have that even if they have autism mm -hmm. we, we have kids with special needs you just have to figure out how it's going to work with them right you have to find different ways right yeah how do i train myself to keep my composure you recognize that this is a human being it's a child you, you wouldn't talk to your husband this way. Mm, maybe. I hope not. If you talk to your husband this way or your boyfriend, that's a whole nother problem. Um, that's right, because this is a boyfriend. Yeah, it comes down to emotional, regula re emotional regulation. You, you need to be able to control your, yourself, period. Right. And all things, not just with children. Mm -hmm. They're young, though, aren't they? Yeah, eight and five. No, I meant the, the people writing in. Uh, she's 28. He's in his 30s. Okay, so maybe not. In this moment, I would recognize that this is a boy who is going to grow up to be a man and I am a mother figure in his life. I do not want this boy one day to be 35 looking back going, why the fuck was my stepmom so mean to me? Yeah. And that's not, e that's not even disciplining them. Right now, the discipline could, be, could seem mean. As an adult, they're going to look back and be like, I'm so glad that she was there and did that for me. The being mean is the yelling I don't understand. I was asking a question and then she yelled at me. I don't understand. Right. But yeah, I, I, I can see that. I also think that that's not necessarily her being mean. Right. A, ch a child would view it that way. Right. But as they get older, they'll understand the frustration and how annoying they are. K kids are annoying as fuck. Like, right. Yeah. You know, they, they don't, they push buttons and push buttons and push buttons. They give zero fucks. They also don't have a, 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 a understanding of time in the way that we do. Right. So when you tell a five-year-old five minutes, mm -hmm. has it been five minutes yet? They don't know what five minutes is. Right. Well, that child is not going to recognize that until they're into their adulthood. Right. This is going to be a teenage boy one day, and he's going to think, my mom, my stepmom yelled at me when I was eight. Fuck her. Yeah. I actually, you know? I heard something the other day that said that um, little kids, this starts at infancy mm -hmm. because they, they're they not going to remember five years from now, right, right, as little kids, but they will remember tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, and, and whatever happens compounds on top of that, and they will remember the previous day on top of what's happening now. And as those things fall off, there's still things compounding that they will remember. And mm -hmm. it affects the relationship that parents have with their kids because of the way that they treat them. Yeah. And because they don't understand the why, mm -hmm. that compounding thing falls into exactly what you're talking about. Right. Yep. Never thought about that. Because I was like, I don't remember anything from my childhood. Like before like five, six years old, I only have four or five memories. They're very like fragmented 
thoughts. Yeah. But I can, I guarantee you as a kid, I can remember, like, I would have been able to remember like shittiness happening. Oh yeah. I can't believe she did that yesterday, you know? (laughs) Uh, So I want to touch on the emailer said, I try to keep my patience. Well, no, that's not it. I simply tell him we need to wait until I get my cup of coffee and then we'll go outside. That's the extent of the communication you have with this child. Even as an adult, I'll be like, hey, why are you doing that? What you up to? What's going on? I'm an inquisitive person. I want to be a part of your life. If the extent of our conversation was like, hey, baby, you having a good morning? Yeah, it's great. You going to tell me why it's great? Yeah. Like, so instead of just saying we need to wait until I have to go outside to get you need to wait until I have my cup of coffee, say I'm very tired in the mornings. I'm like exhausted, whatever. Until I have my cup and coffee, I don't have the energy to be outside like you do. And like hype it up. Be like, I want to have fun with you outside. I don't want to sit out there and be cranky. Let me finish my cup of coffee and then we can go outside and we can both have fun. Kids are all about having fun with people. They don't want to go outside by themselves. Right. You look like you're going to say something. I have a lot, um, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. So first and foremost, caffeine is a drug. Mm. We're, most of us are addicted to it. Yeah. And knowing what I know about caffeine, it's been, I made it a point to like stop drinking energy drinks. First one in four days. Mm-hmm. I had one the day after our interview and, and this is the first one since then. Right. I haven't been drinking soda. Mm-hmm. I've been drinking water. I had a half a soda yesterday. I poured almost, almost an entire soda out because it didn't taste the same to me. I've gotten away from that. Um, so that's a problem. Caffeine has a 24 hour life. Caffeine has a 12, a half life of 12 hours. So if you drink a cup of coffee every morning at seven o'clock, by the time you 630, 645, your body's recognizing that caffeine withdrawal, mm. which is why you feel the need to have a caffeine drink. I need that caffeine. It's not to wake up. It's because your body's going through a withdrawal. You can look that up. That's actually scientifically proven. It's real. The other thing that I was going to say is if your kid doesn't understand when I get my cup of coffee, we'll go outside Get a stool, Mm -hmm. set it next to the counter, and show them step-by-step how to make coffee. Do it every single morning when they ask to go outside. Help me make my coffee, and they can help you make the coffee. And after Mm -hmm. two weeks of that, when they go, I'm ready to go outside, be like, I'm almost done with my coffee. They can look and see where you're at in the process and know how much longer they've got to go until they can go outside. They may not have to ask again because they have a visual visual representation of the coffee steps to know coffee's got to go into the cup once that pot is full. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they'll, they'll know. Yeah. So they can come out, look at the pot and see the pot's this full mm-hmm. pot's this full. It's this full. There's a cup there. Now they can pour the cup real quick. Like, you know, yeah. Or if a pour over or whatever it is that you do for your coffee. Bringing them in on the routine is smart. Yeah. If it, you need. Yeah. Go ahead. No, what are you going to say? I was just going to say that it solidifies that, that routine. It mm-hmm. shows them the step-by-step process. Yeah. It's visual. If you need 15 or 20 minutes after that coffee is made and you sit at the counter, sit at the counter with them, get them a coloring book. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting there on your phone doing whatever you're doing. If you want to finish your coffee, put the coffee cup on the counter by the sink, wherever, and be like, okay, in the sink. Now let's go outside. Yep. That hand signal cup is in the sink. It's fucking go time. Now I can ask, can we go outside? Visual representations of things helps children a lot. Mm -hmm. That's why we teach them with colors. Right. So I try to keep my patience, which is a task, until I finally blow a fuse and yell at him. So with my mental illnesses, I have a very short fuse majority of the time. And I like to think I do a very good job of keeping it in check. The kids know how to fucking light that fuse on fire the moment I pick them up. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So it is to the point now where I will look and be like, I am frustrated. I am becoming frustrated or I'm becoming angry. Like I verbally tell them I'm angry. I need a minute because I. I recognize once that fuse is at that point, I either need to walk away. And if you follow me, there's going to be some sort of fallout. Like I am removing myself from the situation and the children need to recognize me removing myself from the situation is in their best interest. They have learned that to an extent now. They know when I say I'm getting frustrated, maybe I should listen to mom now. Right. She's already told me twice I should stop. I feel like you already have that fucking dad presence. Like I was that pushover parent for a very long time. And now I have to reestablish myself as a parental figure to them. And I think I'm doing a pretty fucking good job of that. You know, they're listening to me more. They are 
throwing less tantrums. When I hit them with a no, it's an okay. Or they might ask one more time, be like, what did I just say? Yeah. They'd be like, okay, you said no, it's a no. When I'm feeling, if I'm sad, I'm sad. I need a minute. I'm overwhelmed. I need a minute. The other day, I took our son plant shopping with me. It was hot outside. I was sweating. I didn't have a hair tie. My hair sticking to my neck. It's sticking to my face. I can feel my armpits, my knees, all of it. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overstimulated. My autism's full fucking blown. I'm having a panic attack. And I get our son in the car. I'm in the car. And I'm like, I'm, all of this is happening. And he was like, Mommy, are you okay? And I looked at him and I was like, Son, I'm overstimulated. <laughs> and he was like, what does that mean? And I was like, I'm sweaty. My hair's touching my face. It's on the back of my neck. There's some in my mouth. I can feel my knees and my armpits are wet. And he was like, oh. And that was the end of the conversation. I don't think he's ever understood the term overstimulated before. And I think that was a lot for him to process. Yeah. But in that moment, I could be like, don't fucking question me. Right. Don't ask me. Give me a minute. Like, I could have said anything else. But in that moment in communicating and what was happening to me, not only helped him understand what I was going through, it could help him identify things within himself. Right. Now we need to teach him the five senses. Yeah. So that he can understand the overstimulated thing to another extent. Mm -hmm. You are a WAP. W-A-P. A A wet ass peaches. (laughs) That, That song got brought up today in the car while we were driving. So that's fresh in my mind, which is the only reason why I said anything. But that shit's funny to me. I had so much other shit that I wanted to talk about with the things that you were just saying. And and that was the only thing that stuck because it was funny to me. You know that your relationship with your kids is not supposed to be a friendship. It's supposed to be you raising respectable human beings. Mm -hmm. And the more that they differentiate the parent from the friend, Mm -hmm. the more the good times mean more. Right. So if you're going plant shopping with the kids or we're taking them to a garden or an aquarium and we're being... Mm -hmm. They're friends and they are establishing that relationship with us. We are still the parental figures. Right. And we will always have that on the top tier and the respect and the friendship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it should tear down. Yeah. So when we have to do the dad thing, they know when I play with our son, Mm -hmm. he gets way overexcited about it because I'm actually playing with him. Right. But I can stop playing mid sentence and be like, that's enough. And he knows like Mm -hmm. we're done now. Yeah. And I don't have to be mean. But right. like he can turn it off because he's learned that when we're done, we're done. Mm-hmm. Those are things that just have to happen. It's it's trial by fire. Right. So in those moments where you're building up, building up until your fuse blows in that build up, look at him and say, hey, I'm getting a little angry right now. Can yeah. we tone it down? I don't want to yell at you. Right. That could be a moment for him to be like, oh, shit, she's never said that. And then that could be a conversation. If he says why, don't get mad that he's asked why. Explain it. Mm. It's frustrating for me when you ask me when I've already told you we'll go outside in a little bit. That could help him recognize I'm the problem. Right. It's me. I'm the one who's causing this frustration because she right. She did tell me. You right. You said that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I told you so is not an effective answer for a child. Right. I like to with our kids now. I'm I I sit down with them. I'm like we've had this conversation. It's not. And I told you so. If I'm repeating yourself, if I'm repeating myself on something, for example, don't touch the door when there's not an adult next to you. Don't open the front door. And you do that anyway and you get in trouble. Don't ask me why you're in trouble. We've had this conversation. Right. You know why. It's not because I told you so. We've had the conversation. And then she repeated back to me. Why are you in trouble? And she told me because I opened the front door without you. Right. They know why they're in trouble. Yeah. They're trying to play the I didn't know any better game or I'm mm-hmm. sorry game. Kids get very, very manipulative. Yeah. Very, very manipulative. Yep. And, you know, I recognized the other morning it was 530 and I'm using the kids restroom and I have a towel draped over me because I'm cold. And <laughs> I was thinking, I'm like, we really are just feral fucking animals that come into this world. And the only difference between our children and lion cubs is that they have opposable thumbs and they can speak yep they can get into way more shit than a lion cub could we are human beings because we are able to train ourselves to be just good fucking people to be intelligent to be more intelligent we are constantly seeking 
hopefully majority of us are constantly seeking new information to better ourselves. We're reading, we're journaling that Kindle. I have maybe six or seven notebooks going in that thing. Yeah. Like the books that I'm reading, I'm reading about our history right now. I'm learning shit that I never knew. And I went to public school. Talk about failing our children. Holy shit. Yeah. Government ran school systems are about indoctrination, not about teaching. You're taught to remember so you can pass tests. Right. There's no knowledge there. We really are just animals with a higher intelligence. And a lot of us are just wasting that intelligence. Mm -hmm. Are his and her shirts are done. (gasps) Yep. Oh, do you want to pick this up today? Uh, Do maybe, we have time? Yeah, I mean, we they close at 5.30. It's 3 now, so yeah, okay. we do. It's We're an hour and 15 minutes in, so we'll okay. just do this one email. Okay. Back to the email. I tend to find myself in these types of situations a lot, which is a problem for me. His daughter tries to be intimidating to my 8-year-old, and if I catch her trying to be intimidating, I will calmly try to correct it, only to be met with her acting like she can't hear me or she tries to stare at me until I simply walk away, which never happens. So there's no hierarchy. No. Oh, wait, she said, which never happens. So right. That she doesn't she kn- just walk away. Right. Okay, good. Um, good. Yeah. We have implemented whatever you do to each other, we're going to do to you. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually never had to enforce that. Right, but it, it's a thing. I mean, I did once. Yeah. Um, our son took a bubble wand and smacked Sissy in the face with it. And I was like, why would you do that? Because I thought it was funny. Bring me that bubble wand. You didn't like that, did you? Yeah. No, it's wet. Right. Don't do that to people. So I have implemented that. <laughs> um, yeah. One of the big things with us, because we have a boy and girl also, is that mm-hmm. I want our son to be a gentleman. So he's learning to not put his hands on his sister. Right. He's going to be a protector. The problem is, is boys are meant to wrestle and do those things. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't have an outlet because there's, it's not like he can jump on his bike like it was the 1980s and ride over to his friend's house and fucking jump ramps and be mm-hmm. a fuck face to his friends. Right. That hierarchy within a man is normal mm-hmm. and he doesn't have that. And that's a problem. And we recognize that, which is why we're looking. We I still have to fucking contact that jujitsu school, but we want to put him into some sort of Class, active yeah. thing. Right. I actually think that she's she might want to get into that, too, because she's a little she wants to be a little Batman. Yeah, she does. Um. I think that roughhousing is good for them. It is. You know, I don't want her to be a meek individual who can't stand up for herself. Right. I have implemented with them. You guys can roughhouse. We don't kick each other in the private parts. We don't hit each other in the face and we don't hit in the throat. Right. But there was also an instance of a rear naked choke between a four and a five year old. And that's very dangerous. So like, yeah, we're (laughs) we're trying Um, to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. So no more Batman shows. So yeah. (laughs) Or or Mighty Morphin Power Rangers at four years old. But we've told them that like... You know, when I've said that to them, the one time that I had to step in because he did something, I leaned over and I was like, how would you like it if I did that to you? And he's like, <gasps> I'm like, yeah. yeah, don't don't do that again. You know what I mean? So like, but no, it was more specific. Don't do that to a woman. Like, right. don't do that to a lady. Right. Because that's that's and that's what it is. Yeah. I got to be honest. This is going to sound really shitty. I don't care if he's mean to other boys mm-hmm. because another boy could beat his ass and they're going to learn from it. That's yeah. that's how men learn. Mm-hmm. If you if you take any two boys on the planet. And put them together and leave them unsupervised long enough, they're going to wrestle. Oh, yeah, they're going to. There's there, going to be rough There's houses. going to fight. There's going to be competition. They're going to see who can spit the farthest. Yeah. Arm wrestling. There's going to be all kinds of stupid yeah. shit that happens there because that's how boys establish hierarchy and, like, mm-hmm. a bond. It's normal. Yeah. So I actually remember having spitting competitions at five and six years old to see who could spit the farthest. That's all you got, bro? Like, you don't have no lungs? Like, what's going on? Are there all kinds of shit talking happening? Like... That's normal behavior for boys. Oh, yeah. But it shouldn't happen to girls. In my young, young years. So I have two male cousins. And there were points I remember, like maybe with my grandpa, where they were doing spitting competitions. I, like, I want to do that. And you spit on yourself? No, I was I, not on myself. I definitely was not. You know, it was like. <laughs> No, the spitting on myself started happening more recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because I got a picture the other day. <laughs> I forgot I sent you that. Wow, I bet living with me is fun. You were sitting there like this, all fucking disappointed with a loogie on your arm? Yeah, because I went, and it got caught here. And I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, and it, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and this was like right after I told you about that story of me struggling in front of the lady going. 
<laughs> trying to get the spit off of my LeBray piercing. <laughs> Outside of me being like a complete spoke show and emotionally intelligent and just a really good like housewife. What is it like having just constant comedy? Pure chaos. Yeah. Yep. I never know what I'm going to get when I open a picture from you. It could be a booty shot. It could be something really, really dirty. It could be something really inappropriate. It could be something stupid like you spitting on yourself. It could be a picture of, of like a snake. I've gotten yeah. videos of snakes, like just really weird shit. <laughs> I have to, I send the photo and then I send a message immediately after if you can't open it around people yeah. because you really just never know. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you always check your watch too. I do. I check my watch first. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. Cause if it's, if it's not you nine times out of 10, I'm not going to grab my phone. <laughs> there was one time he was sitting next to this sweet little old lady. <laughs> I think you're getting ready to get your blood drawn. Yeah. Yep. Keep him on his toes. It's happened at the bank too. At the bank, though, I didn't get the text message. Hey, don't open this in front of anyone. I opened it and I was standing right next to Rachel and it was just a full on ass shot. And I was like, oh, yep. put that in my pocket. <laughs> that was actually the intent. So I was like, I should probably send a message afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you always tell me got to keep her on her toes. I really do do that for you, though. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That flirtiness, too. Dude, mm -hmm. we're really off topic. That flirtiness too with us though goes a long way. Like yeah. there's not, this is going to sound kind of shitty, I think, but like mentally mm -hmm. to me, it, it may not sound as good as I hope it does, but we are like at a primitive level, we are hunter gatherers. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what we do. We, we hunt, we kill, we fucking bring the food, you cook the food. Like we have this whole thing going, Right. but there is a, a base desire in a man to want to feel like a conqueror to feel like that with that warrior and to feel good. And like, I'm that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And when I get those booty shots still after all this time and you, you, you know, you brag, my man's got me and you do all of that. It makes me feel like I am that motherfucker. Like, yeah. so it's, it satisfies something in me. And I think that a lot of men want that and they get it when they first start dating. Mm -hmm. That shit falls off, and that's why men start looking elsewhere. You come become combative. It's yeah. a nagging thing all the time at the house. There's no longer a sexual intimacy there. Like, and that's most relationships. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about that. I'm still getting booty shots and like baseball slides. Yeah, yes. We're not even getting into that on the podcast. That was a whole fucking instance. Like, that's a Patreon conversation. Yeah, okay. Yep. Speaking of which, we've gotten two Patreons since sitting here. Oh shit. Yep. Patron. Yep, shit's coming back, coming back around. We're gaining, gaining patron traction again. So before we continue reading into this email, I want to clarify or just put it out there. I don't think this woman's a bad woman. No, not at all. I, I actually don't, don't think she's a bad parent. Right. I just, don't think she's a bad parent either. Yeah. Just because you've raised your voice every once in a while. I mean, fuck it. Sometimes you got to yell at a kid. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to yell at adults. Bro, there's times where the kids are just all over me and they have their sticky hands in my eyeballs and something's in my mouth and something's in my ear. I'm like, get off. Yep. I definitely yell in that moment like, bro, our daughter literally bent down and touched shit yesterday on our walk. No way. She did. And I held her arm up because I'm like, you're not touching yourself with this hand. Disgusting. Like, get off of me. <laughs> so I just want to clarify. I don't think she's a bad mom. I don't think no, she's I a bad woman, bad person, anything. So far, I don't really disagree yeah. with any of this. I think that there are better routes. Definitely. I think that before even getting into the boyfriend side of the email, I think that the boyfriend has some things that he could possibly step up on as well. Oh, I'm guarantee it. Cause he's the, so. the you know, the, the, the weak one in all of this. Yeah. And I view that as such. Mm. He, there's also a difference between yelling at your kids, like you little fucking piece of shit. Cause that's abusive. Right. But going, stop. Mm -hmm. Like those one word commands. Mm -hmm. Like if your kid's about to touch the stove, you don't want to be like, don't do that. It's hot. Right. It's, too fucking late right you yell stop and they get startled and freeze mm -hmm. they're not going to burn themselves on the fucking stove yeah there is a psychology behind that if you need them to stop doing something you say stop and they don't and you say it a second time and you say it with authority mm -hmm. they fucking get it yeah so when i say yell i don't mean like cuss them out degrading and talk shit your child and degrade your child right just yeah. fucking one word commands enough attention stop. like right yep enough is always what i say yeah i, I very rarely say stop to them because I want that to be reserved for when they really need to fucking freeze. Emergency. Oh, yeah. That's a good. I didn't even recognize that. I'm going to start doing that. Words matter. Words matter. 
Back to the email. I'm no try. I'm no way trying to act like my girls are perfect because they are not. But in the same instance, I parent them differently, which leads me to correcting them when they need correcting and being met with a yes, ma'am. They do really well with my boyfriend and have a great relationship, but his children do not have this with me. That's because you raised your kids to with have authority. Yeah. Right. Respect. And, and you see the difference in parenting. If your mm-hmm. kids are more behaved than his are, you're obviously the better parent. Yeah. And before we even get into his email, mm-hmm. if that's actually the case, you don't really have an argument that needs to be said other than look at the way the kids are. Right. My kids behave better than yours do. Mm-hmm. My parenting clearly fucking works. And unless you want participation trophy and little pussies that yeah. want to fucking whine and cry and like, you know, ugh, I fucking hate that shit. You know, we have our kids. Obviously, to- don't call the kids pussies. No. Oh, my. <laughs> I started getting worked up thinking yeah. about that because I hate that fucking mindset. It's it's not that mindset. It's children and it's the mindset in adults that pisses you off. Right. Because but it that's, comes into it comes from childhood. Yeah. So you're not pissed off at children. No. You're pissed off at the parents who have failed the right. children. Um, our children are to the point now where we're in public. So mainly I'm the one who take the kids out in public grocery shopping, plant shopping, whatever we're doing. And every time they see a baby, they go, a oh, baby, mama, look, a baby. Like... Full on. They say it like that, too. I don't know where the accent came from, where it's gone, but Hmm. they get British when they see a baby. And (laughs) if they see if they hear a child throwing a fit in public, they go, mommy, mommy. That baby's whining. And be like, what baby? And be like, look over there. And like, we'll find the child. And it's not a baby. This is a maybe six or seven year old kid throwing an absolute fit in the middle of a store. And my child's are like, our kids are like. Yep. Don't know that one. Yep. It is definitely on the parents to raise the children properly. Yep. That's a flex to me. I'm I'm definitely flexing right now. I think our parenting is absolutely fantastic. The kid's father is doing great with parenting. And he's definitely setting boundaries with the kids and consequences and learning and understandings. And I will flex that our children are definitely more emotionally mature than most. Me and my kids make fun of you and your kids. <laughs> I think in reading the sentence that they do well with my boyfriend and have a great relationship with him, but his children do not have one with her also says a lot. Right. Why wouldn't you want your children to have an amazing relationship with the person you're going to spend your life with? Well, the problem is, is that she's the authority figure. Right. And they don't like that shit. Right. But he should be implementing those kinds of things. Like I want you guys to have a relationship or I want, my girlfriend to have a relationship with my kids the way that I have with hers. I don't see how that want in me for our children to have a good relationship with you has completely altered my parenting style. You have to elaborate. So I saw issues in my parenting style prior to us being together because of the guilt that I harbored because of the way that I was treated in my childhood. I was absolutely horrible horrified of fucking up my kids i i didn't know what was an extreme i didn't know what was being too passive like there were never calm conversations in my childhood so i didn't i never had a fucking decent example of how to parent so i i was trying to figure everything out and i didn't i i I didn't know anything and being with you and recognizing certain behaviors and things where you're like, I can't believe they're behaving that way. I had issues with those behaviors. I didn't recognize how far off they were with those behaviors. Right. Right. I was a bad child, but my kids were not as bad as I was. So I didn't think it was that bad. You know, I think parents need to be more open to hearing other perspectives about their children. You really do. You were raised the way you were raised. You don't know other parenting styles until you try them, until you look at them, until you implement them. All children are different. The way that you were raised could be the exact same way you're raising your children, and it could be a problem because that child's not you. Right. There's there's psychology behind that too. Yeah. For every every study that you find that says gentle parenting is the way, strict parenting is the way, there's no conclusive data. Mm -hmm. To really say one way or the other. Right. There, there, are, There is actually a tribe on the planet mm-hmm. that the mother would not look at the baby. 
the mother would not make eye contact with her child. Mm -hmm. And those children grew up no different than children who were coddled. They still have the same productive lives. They move on. They go and do their own thing. Right. When you look at Spartan childhood, their mm -hmm. childhood was very different. Those men grew up to be warriors. Like that was a very different time frame. We have new understandings of psychology, but we don't know the long-term effects of the psychology. Right. What we do know is that children started getting coddled a lot more over the last 30 years, and men are fucking vaginas because of it. Mm -hmm. And like we are having an epidemic where women are having to come out of their femininity and into their masculine to fucking run a household because men want to play video games, eat fucking bonbons, and cry about how unfair life is. Right, and pay <clears> for <throat> OnlyFans and shit. Right, so so you can't tell me that like what we're doing is working long term because where we're at, it's not effective. Yeah. I, I don't know. So the, the whole idea of what you were saying and that it's different from child to child, you are going to have to find what resonates with that child. Yeah. And you can't raise a, a boy... The same way that you raise a girl because you have different expectations of such. Right. We still have to do that episode. Yeah. I just went on a whole nother line of thought because you're right. I don't expect my daughter to be able to defend herself I in do. a war. Well, not in a war. but Right. <clears throat> that's just that's not the way of thinking anymore. There aren't drafts anymore and that kind of shit. Right. So. There could be. Right. That was that. That's where my mind went to. I right. definitely want our daughter to defend herself. Right. That's not where I was going. I, I would like both of them to do jujitsu. Um. But that's, you know, I want to find a school that's conducive to jujitsu and not just MMA shit. Right. I'd gladly pay for that. When it comes to the parenting style. So we moved in together and we started having conversations like the counting. I hated fucking counting. I hated doing it. I thought it was that or just yelling at them because I didn't have another example as a child. And I would rather count than yell at my kids. And then you came into the picture and you're like, just stop fucking counting. And I was like, what do you mean? Give them the one option. Okay, then what do I do after that? Like You follow through. So that follow through. It was hard for you. Being, being a parent after being the result of fucked up parenting is hard. It's I get it. fucking hard. Like I didn't recognize how unhealthily, I, how unhealthy the parenting style I was raised in was until I started unlearning even just the softest of those things, like the countdowns mm -hmm. blows my mind. And now I feel like I am the parent in the situation. I went from being worried about the kids hating me or not wanting to be around me to yeah, fucking hate me. But I know one day when you're an adult, you're going to be in a healthy relationship and you're going to be successful. Mm hmm. You got to keep in mind, too, that the hate is an emotion in the moment. Right. As soon as they calm down, that goes away. So hate does go away. That, for example, in my case, there is that lingering of there's just no want for parental connection. Show up with you? With me, yeah. Right, but that was a very different scenario. Right, you were I know. Abused. That's what I was worried about, though. Right, yeah, That's this is just not the same thing. I know, but that was my concern. Like, I, I know, and I'm saying, but, and it's not an excuse. That is the explanation in my mind. Like, that was it. And I worked past that. I was, I was holding that door shut. Yeah. When you fucking let go and just open it, or you don't have to walk through it. If you open that door and peek into it, which is the smart fucking thing to do, because you never know what's on the other side of a door. It's a new door. It's an open door. And if you don't like it, you can close it again. How did we get here? I don't know where I'm at. This is like the first episode. First first 10 podcasts. We're all over the place. I'm having a good time. I, I am too. And I think there's a lot of really good, valuable information here. And I know that people are going to shit on me. Every time we talk about parenting, even in Discord, people are like, damn, I can't believe he's like that. It happens. But you know what? I'm a good fucking man. And there, there, are, there are people who are paying me to teach them how to be the way that I am. Right. My kids are fucking sound human beings. And they're obsessed with you. Right. So they cannot like me in the moment if I'm like, hey, pick that up. Right. Okay, here's a prime example. Our son plays with everything that is not a toy. His and favorite makes thing it a toy. right now. Yeah, it's straws. straws. It's fucking weird. Colored straws specifically. And they can be all kinds of things. But he had a meltdown one night and he threw everything on the floor and I picked it up and set it up really high on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and I was like, 
We don't do that. As men, we don't throw temper tantrums. We don't throw things because of trying to teach him at five years old that we don't punch holes in the wall. Yeah. We don't scream. We don't yell. We don't have meltdowns. We, we don't throw things. We conduct ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I picked it up and I set it on the shelf and I calmly looked at him and I was like, if you ever do that again, I'm going to assume that your toy is garbage and that's where I'm going to put it. And he fucking had a meltdown over it. I'm like, stop crying. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to throw it away. You're, Just now. You're losing it for right now because you threw your toy on the garbage. It was a fucking straw. Mm-hmm. You threw your toy on the ground. That is an indicator to me that you no longer want your toy and it is garbage. Mm-hmm. So if things end up on the floor in the living room, not in your playroom. Right. I'm going to assume that it's garbage and that's where it's going to end up. Mm-hmm. The other day he threw something on the ground, looked at it and, was like, and picked it back up. It took that one time yeah. for him to understand that there's never toys left in the living room. I think that also instills in them when you have value in something, even when you're mad, you don't discard it. Right. Which goes into a whole other thing. Psychologically, that leads yeah. into relationships and, and a whole lot of other things. Mm-hmm. But these things are being instilled at five years old. Yeah. So when people want to come at me and say that I'm you know, too strict or I'm a bad parent, my five-year-old is acting like a gentleman. Mm-hmm. So fuck yourself. Like yeah. there's nothing that you can tell me that's going to make me feel otherwise. Right. And, there, and there's no sol- psychology behind any of it. That's long-term study that's going to convince me that what I'm doing is wrong because at five, I have a fucking gentleman. Mm-hmm. I want to touch on that moment. I watched him. So he made a turkey with very angry eyebrows last year for Thanksgiving on a piece of paper. And he's yeah. obsessed with it. I love the photo. The angry eyebrows kill me. They're like massive like like girls on instagram now yeah Bl- bulky Looking and like everything dirt, dirt dastardly from the 70s in the cartoons and um he hadn't put his shoes on yet i asked him twice already i was like you've lost your tablet you're not getting your tablet in the car this morning put your shoes on we're already running late and he was holding his thing he got mad and he threw it on the ground and he walked away and i, I watched because i want to see what he was going to do he stopped and he turned around he looked at it and then he picked it up and he put it back and then he walked away and I sat there for a moment. He got his shoes on. I was like, son, come here. I was like, I'm proud of you for doing that. I saw that. I was like, I saw you pick up that piece of paper and you put it back. And I was like, that's what Chris was talking about. Good job. Yep. And he had a whole moment. He was proud of himself. And I want to touch on the, him being a gentleman. He, now at school, I open that door in front of people. Mom, don't touch that door. Yeah. Yeah. He's very big about it. He's holding the door open for other women now. We, um, so we enter in a door code to get into the school. And there was another woman behind us waiting for us. The door is automatic, but he still stood there in front of that door and waited for her to get inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he understands the safety aspect of it. And yeah. that's why that we do. That's why we do it. It has nothing to do with them not touching the door. It's, it's for your safety. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's part of being a protector. Yeah. I want our son to be one of those men when he has grown that anybody can look to and know he will protect me. Mm hmm. He's not going to be somebody who's going to pull out his cell phone and start recording shit or laugh and walk by or make any woman feel unsafe. Did you ever watch American Sniper? The Chris Kyle movie. I don't know if we've watched that together or not. I believe we did once. I was, I was, I'm a big fan of Chris Kyle. I think we were still dating when we watched that. He did a lot with veterans before he was killed, but, um, there was a scene in that. So I, and I really actually, as much as I like the story and like, I, I appreciate that they told the story. Bradley Cooper shortly came out afterwards, like in opposed to the two a and like was very anti-gun, even though he just made a movie that made him millions of dollars being a sniper. Mm-hmm. Fucking hypocrite. Anyways, I, um, there was a scene in that movie where. That's a lot for me to process. Why? What you just said. He was anti-gun. He made a movie about being a, a, a one of the most deadly snipers in American history. Like Chris Kyle was a fucking badass. Right. The yeah. director. No, the, the sniper and the guy that played him, Bradley Cooper, who was in that Lady Gaga movie that everybody likes. Do you know what I'm talking about? He was also in, I want to say he might have been in The Hangover. Um, I don't know. But he's anti-gun? Yeah, he came out after that movie, like after he played Chris Kyle and made millions of dollars playing a sniper, made like an anti- second amendment statement and like oh how disrespectful he's hollywood though like of course he's gonna come out and say that shit even if he feels that way he's got to toe the line otherwise he's gonna get shunned by fucking hollywood that's that's a whole different discussion but there's a lot of actors liam nelson is one of those people who's made tons of movies where he's been like an active shooter badass killing people who's then come out anti-second amendment um who's the chick that played eon flux 
Charlie Ther- Charlie Theron. She was another one who's made movies where she's a fucking badass with a gun and then comes out anti Second Amendment. You don't get to make movies where you're portraying yourself as a fucking shooter and a badass and then come out and be like, but guns are the fucking problem. Make millions of dollars off of this. Right. You fucking hypocrite. So that's where that was going. Anyways. That gives me the same vibe of like, I'm a good person. I'll offer shit just to be a good person. Yeah. And if you accept, fuck you for accepting. Right. What? Yep. So anyways, in, in American Sniper, there's a scene where his brother gets beat up by a bully and he didn't defend him. And the Mm. dad, dad had a fucking meltdown over it. Or maybe he bullied somebody and and like the dad heard about it, but there was a scene and and the phrase was, we are raising sheep dogs, not wolves. And I was like, motherfucker, bro. Like tell me that like goosebumps. That's what I want my kids to be. You earned that shirt you're wearing. Fuck each and every one of you that said that he doesn't care about his kids. Yep. He made it a point, that conversation, um, <clears throat> that conversation continued and he was like, I'll be damned if you go looking for a fight, but if it comes to your door, you better defend your family. You know, you defend your brother, you defend yourself, like you don't take it, but I'm not raising bullies. And like, yeah. he, it was very, we're gonna have to watch that movie so you can see that scene. That was one of those scenes that like, there that happens every once in a while while I hear something and like you'll catch me rewind something back out I hear that again because yeah. I need it to solidify. Right. I watched that scene probably a hundred fucking times first time I saw that movie. I had to rewind it over and over and over again to solidify that in my brain because when I was little, little, I got picked on. Yeah. And then like cause I was I was believe it or not, I was actually a skinny kid at one point. Like little little kid, little little Chris had abs. Like I was skinny, skinny. Mm-hmm. And I was little. And I, I didn't want to hurt people. Like, I didn't want to fight. And, like, I know that sounds like a stupid thing to say I don't want to hurt people because obviously no be- people shouldn't want to hurt people. But, like, I was enrolled in karate very early. Like, I, I did martial arts as a little kid. So, like, even though I know that that doesn't make me, you know, a fucking a threat, Gracie a threat. black belt, yeah. right? Like, it, it made me learn conflict very, very early on. Like, I learned how to kick and punch and throw and throw people, mm-hmm. you know? So I never wanted to actually fight when I was little. And then I got very fat over the course of a summer. Like I went from a normal healthy kid to obese as fuck because I broke my arm and spent an entire three months playing video games and eating pizza. Yeah. And it it blew up like a blimp. Mm -hmm. And I never since then, I've never been able to get the weight off. It's always been there. Even through diet and exercise, the lowest I've been since sixth grade is 202 pounds. And like that does not fit my body frame because I'm so used to being a big person. But it took me getting into a fight in like seventh grade before I realized that like I can actually do damage if I wanted to. And it was one of those things where like you hear kids snap. It's why we have active shooter situations. Kids have had enough and they just fucking unload. Yeah. Well, I I was getting picked on and being called fat and like I was being like bully bullied Mm -hmm. and I fucking gave someone everything I had. And once I hit that person and like it's the true story, bullies, they, they choose easy targets. I was not an easy target anymore. That bullying shit stopped. The only people that picked on me beyond that were people who were in gangs and like had numbers behind them because I was, I was that kid that fucking hit somebody and did some damage. And it wasn't like just a busted lip. Like I fucked that kid up. There was a whole, there was a a giant transition in my life. I can imagine. But I could have been the bully after that. And I chose not to because I know what it felt like to be picked on. Like I didn't want to be that person. I don't know. That's why I have it in me to be that protector. I don't want people to feel like I felt like when I was a kid. Like right. nobody should feel like a victim. People should also not have a victim mentality. Mm-mm. So, you know, you saying that I'm very hung up on that thing that I stitched the other day. Which one you said? The one you sent me of um, the gentleman changing the, the tire. tires. Yeah. yeah. Knowing your background and knowing that from a young age, you've just wanted to fucking help people and defend people and protect people. I could never imagine depriving you of that because I want to be a nasty, vindictive, insecure wife. Yeah. That's absolutely insane. That would change who you are as a person. Fundamentally, that would change who you are. Yep. I'm glad you can thrive with me. Yeah, I'm glad that we have what we have for sure. The The idea of of me having to change who I am as a person to, to satiate somebody else's needs would be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. 
I guess, I guess maybe not though, because it's one of the things that I see as a good thing. If I had flaws that I would be working on, I would be changing who I am fundamentally as a person. Right. But I, you don't, you don't hinder like who I am at my core, mm-hmm. which is a good thing. You support it. So yeah. I even laugh at your farts. You do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Back to the email. His son has had temper tantrums to the point that I send him to his room, and if he doesn't get attention by screaming to the top of his lungs, he will proceed to throw things, banging on the walls and on the window. I have tried to be the calm figure. Fi- fi- ha- I have tried to be the calm female figure in his life while he is with us, but I'm not patient enough for the tantrums. Okay, I'm gonna pause you. This, this right here is the kind of man who is going to grow up and get angry and throw things. They're going to punch holes in the wall and eventually they're going to put their hands on their spouse. Yeah. This is Um, exactly what the fuck I was just talking about. This is the kind of man who also grow up and not respect boundaries in a relationship. Right. Right. That, that's a problem. Um, boyfriend of this emailer, you're fucking up a little bit. Yeah. We haven't even gotten to his part yet. I would absolutely lose my mind if our son, if I send him to his room and he started hitting the window All you're going to have your room is a fucking bed. I wouldn't even give him that. You have a bed on the floor. A blanket and a pillow. There's padding underneath of that carpet. You'll be all right. It, that's, there's, there's a whole lot of discipline that needs to be happening there. Absolutely There's no emotional regulation. Yeah. No, no emotional maturity and free reign to destroy stuff. Tell me how that's going to work out as an adult when his girl says no. Hearing that our son stopped himself and picked up something that he threw off the floor because he was mad and put it back. From one conversation. Same age as this child. Same age as this boy, five years old. Blows my mind. When their father gets home from work, things gradually get worse. As soon as he comes in, the kids bombard him, which is sometimes sweet, but sometimes terrible. His son will follow him everywhere. He doesn't even have time. He doesn't even have enough time to wash his hands or sit down before he is asking if they can go outside or start complaining because one of the girls has remote, has the remote to the TV and he wants it, etc. Okay, guys, so that was episode 35. We ended it with her email because we still need to get into his side of things. Um, I'm not sure how long this thing was because we recorded the full thing and then split it to do a to be continued. Mm. So this episode is a to be continued. Um, I know that it sounds like we were super harsh on him, but you haven't heard his side of the story yet. So make sure that you turn in, tune in next Monday to get all of the details on what his side of things are yep. and, and see if see if we have a different side of things. Same. Does our opinion change? It Find might. Out. Yep. With that being said, guys, remember you are the authors of your own story. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.